All right, welcome to our first episode in a 10-part series on cell division. Now, in Chapter 10, we're going to learn the following items. We're going to learn about why cells are so small. That's what this episode's about. We're going to learn about how prokaryotic cells go through cell division. The bulk of our chapter is going to be on how eukaryotic cells go through cell division. And we're also going to learn about chromosome structure. So we're going to go back to a previous chapter and revisit that. And we're also going to learn how a cell controls its growth and how cancer can be caused when those growth regulations go out of whack. But let's learn about how cells are so darn small. So small, we have to use a microscope to look at them. Well, both of the things that you see here on your screen basically deal with how far away the parts of the cell are from the cell membrane. Now, if you remember back in Chapter 7, when we talked about how things will diffuse in and out of the cell, that's what we mean. We need to make sure that all organelles, like the nucleus, the mitochondria, ribosome, etc., they can't be too far away from the cell membrane because nutrients need to get in and out of the cell, and the cell needs to be able to get rid of waste and whatnot. Okay, so that's what these two on your screen are about. Okay, so what we're talking about here with DNA overload is there's only so much DNA that can be described, and therefore only so much mRNA can be made. And obviously, if you remember from chapter 13, that that mRNA needs to leave the nucleus and go out to a ribosome so it can be translated. Well, if the cell is really big, think of like big as a baseball, there's no way that a teeny tiny nucleus can create enough mRNA to feed the bazillions of, of ribosomes that would be in that cell. So if the cell is small, there'll be just the right amount of ribosomes to go with the amount of uh, RNA transcripts that come from the nucleus. Now, in some cells that are real long, for example, like muscle cells, let's write this in here. So like skeletal muscle cells, they get around this, even though they can be real long. Like for example, a cell can be from, from your hip all the way down to your knee, like one of those uh, uh, leg muscle cells. Uh, they actually have more than one nucleus. And that is called multinucleated, which means more than one nucleus. All right, so they can get the, the RNA transcripts out to all the ribosomes because they have lots of different nucleus. Okay, now this one here deals directly with the size. We've got to be able to get uh, materials in and out of the cell efficiently, and a large cell is going to have a trouble with that. All right, so you can't get too far away from the cell membrane. Now. With this, these two here are related to the size. We've got some math that explains how this number two works. So let me clear the screen here. Let's move on to the next one. All right. It deals with a math ratio called the surface area to volume ratio. And what really needs to happen is the surface area must be a lot larger than the volume. And we're talking six, seven, eight, nine, ten times larger than the volume. So you want a large surface area to volume ratio. So what that means in plain English is you want this number to be like maybe a 10 and then maybe this one here just to be the number one so that the ratio will be a 10 to one. In other words, the surface area is 10 times larger than the volume. Now look down here at number two. As a cell grows, its volume is going to increase at a much faster rate than the surface area. So what happens is, is that this number right over here is going to get larger. So even though this is growing, maybe this is now 20, what happens is maybe the volume is now a 7. So this ratio here has gotten smaller. All right, now, if you're losing track of what I'm talking about here because we're just spitting some numbers out, here's a picture that explains it a lot better. All right, we've got three cells right here. All right, we've got, and think of like the three bears. We've got a baby one, a mommy one, and a daddy one. All right, so let's go over here with the smallest one. To find the volume, you need to go length times width times height. So that would be 1 times 1 times 1. That would be 1. Now to figure out the surface area, you would take length times width. And because this is a cube, you would multiply that number by 6. So the surface area is 6 centimeters squared. The volume is 1 centimeter cubed. So it's a 6 to 1 volume. In other words, this uh, 
surface area is six times bigger than the volume. That's a good separation. You know, it's a, it's a big number. Okay, now over here on the two centimeter uh, uh, cubed cell, its surface area is two times two times six, which is 24. I mean, it's a lot bigger than this one down here, but its volume is now two times two times two, which is eight. So we have a 24 divided by eight, which comes down to a three to one volume, to, uh, or three to one surface area to volume ratio. So this number's not as big as this one. And now we go over here to an even larger cell where it's three by three by three, we get a surface area to volume ratio of only two to one. Now, if you would go back one more slide, you would see the point that I'm getting at, all right? You see this distance right here? Look at how it gets farther apart as the cells get bigger, all right? This nucleus down here in our baby cell, it's not very far away from the edge. So oxygen can get in, carbon dioxide can get out, uh, information from this nucleus can move around to a different ribosome. Over here in the, in the medium-sized cell, we've got a lot more distance. It's going to take a lot of time for this stuff to diffuse around the cell. And then over here, now you can see the big difference in our very large cell. This is a huge amount of space. So things from the nucleus is going to take more time to get to the corners of the cell, where over here it becomes much more, more efficient. All right, so what we want is we want a large surface area compared to the volume. Okay, very important concept. Smaller makes you have a bigger surface area to volume ratio. It seems kind of kind of weird to say smaller is bigger, but in this case when we're talking about this ratio, that is certainly the case. So a small cell has a huge advantage over a large cell on getting things moved about it efficiently. All right, let's get rid of that one. All right, so how big can a cell actually get? Well, it can get about twice its double, twice its original size. Now, once it reaches twice its original size, it's got two choices. Number one, it can simply stop growing and live happily ever after. And when a cell does that, it is said to be in what is called the gap zero. This is a zero right there. This is called the gap zero phase. And when we talk about the cell cycle, specifically interphase, we're going to come back and talk about that. I'm going to put a little dash through there so that you know that that's a gap zero phase. All right. A lot of the cells in your body are in this phase. They just kind of reach a certain point, and they're just going to live happily ever after until... You know, one of the characteristics of life is death until we would pass away. That's when those cells would keep, uh, cease to be living. Now, if you do not want to go into that phase, now you got to go into the part where it's called division. The cell is going to split into two. Now, it's going to split into what is called two daughter cells. So we have a mother cell, and then it divides into two daughter cells. This is a process called cell division, and this is what most of this chapter is about. Now, if you would break down cell division into two very, very simple and basic steps, step one would be DNA replication. You have to replicate the DNA because daughter cell number one needs a complete set of genes and daughter cell number two needs a complete set of genes. So they have to have their own complete copy of the genome. And then finally, we have fission. Fission is a word that simply means to split. So once we have a copy of our DNA, in other words, we have enough for two complete cells, those two cells will divide into two daughter cells, or that one cell will divide into the two daughter cells. Okay? Now, out of this episode, I really, really, really want you to make sure you understand that surface area to volume ratio stuff. A smaller cell has a bigger number, and that gives them a great advantage over moving materials in and out of the cell. Okay, well, until next time, we're going to catch you on the flip side.